Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, let's talk about spheres, um, primarily about uh, surface area and the volume of the sphere. Well, this lecture is part of the course for uh, high school students uh, in advanced mathematics. It's presented on unizor.com. Um, and not only the video you can get if you go to this particular site, but also um, uh, notes for each lecture. And sometimes uh, you have tests, exams, etc. So I recommend you to watch this lecture from that site and use it <coughs> as much as you can. Uh, okay, spheres, area and volume of the sphere. All right. Well, first of all, we probably have to um, just uh, spend a couple of seconds to talk about what is a sphere. It has been defined in one of the previous lectures where I introduced all the solid geometry objects. So it's basically all uh, points um, in the space, in three-dimensional space, which are um, equidistant from a center, a fixed point. So now um, we have to uh, talk about volume and uh, surface area of the, sp uh, of the sphere. Well, first of all, sphere is defined by one and only one parameter, which is radius. Um, so, volume and surface area will be defined uh, in terms of radius. So, we need some formulas, basically. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'll derive a couple of formulas for volume and um, and the surface area of the uh, sphere. And I will start with volume when I will explain um, whatever uh, I want to talk about as far as the surface area is concerned, you will understand why I decided to, to have the volume first. All right. Um, now, um, it would be easier for me to um, evaluate the volume of half a sphere let's say this one. So we have certain plane which goes through the center of the sphere, it divides it basically in half, and I will evaluate the volume of this upper half. And then I'll multiply it by two of this. <coughs> now, uh, to do that, um, I have to, unfortunately, resort to certain um, intuitive understanding of certain things. I mean, there is some limit theory involved in this and uh, um, and I would probably not like to do it in all rigorousness. However, whatever I will talk about will be relatively well understood intuitively and uh, that's pretty sufficient for this particular lecture. Now, how can I evaluate the volume of this half a sphere? Um, well, I will um, have a stack of very um, short cylinders which fill up this particular thing. So the way how I do it is the following. I will divide this perpendicular from the center perpendicular to this plane uh, into n equal parts. And basically I will draw a parallel lines here, like here. They will divide, divide the area into slices. Alright, so, and then I will build a cylinder from each upper part down. So it will be like this. something like this. So it's cylinders which are sitting on the top of each other. They have the height equals to obviously R divided by N, right? And as you understand I will then increase N to infinity and the sum of the volumes of these cylinders um, is supposed to go to the volume of the sphere, half a sphere in this case, because the cylinders will be narrower and narrower and that's why it will be more and more tightly 
filling my half a sphere. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to evaluate first a case number k cylinder here and then I will summarize it by k from 1 to n and then I will uh, 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 increase n to infinity and take the limit. So that's the plan. All right. All right. So the case cylinder. Um, let's call this point uh, a one, a two, a three, etc. Whatever. So a case is somewhere here. Well, first of all, why am I saying that these are cylinders? Well, it's actually very easy. If you draw a plane parallel to uh, the base of this half a sphere, you obviously will get in a section a circle. Now, why? Well, that's kind of simple. So if this is my circle, main circle, well, this is invisible, and I have a perpendicular and draw another plane parallel to my base plane here. Now, why is this a circle? Well, if you take any two points, let's say this point and this point and this point or any other point actually. Now, these distances are supposed to be the same because um, if you consider O, A, B, C, D. If you consider triangle O, A, B, for instance, or O, A, C, or O, A, D, all these triangles are uh, right triangles because this plane is parallel to this one and this is the perpendicular to both of them, right? Now, also OB and OC and OD, since BC and D are on this sphere, they're all radiuses of the same uh, sphere, so they're all equal to each other. And OA, it's a catheter which they all share. That's why AB and AC and AD are all equal to each other, so this is a circle. So when I draw all these planes parallel to the base plane, in the section I always have circles. And whenever, if I have two circles parallel to each other, one and then another. Oops, let me take another. If I have two circles parallel to each other, and I draw basically perpendicular lines through each of them, I obviously have a cylinder because this is a cylindrical surface with this as a directress, right? And you have two parallel planes which are bounding this particular cylindrical surface. All right, so these are cylinders. We know their height, which is radius divided by n. And what is the radius of a circle? Um, the radius of a circle, which is somewhere, if this is a point A case, for instance, A K. So what's the radius of this cylinder, um, which um, is formed by the plane uh, on the case place? Well, that's very easy, actually. Because the distance from O to AK, O AK, is equal to what? The whole thing is R, and this is K out of R. So it's K divided by N radius, right? Now, the radius of the circle is the distance to this point. So you can always consider the right triangles. Now, the right, right triangle uh, would 
we have this is a catheter, this is the catheter, and this is hypotenuse, which is equal to R, the radius, right? Because this point is on the surface of a circle. So we have that lowercase uh, r square of this particular uh, circle formed by the plane uh, going through a k is equal to r square minus minus this k divided by n r square so that's the radius square of the case cylinder and this is the height all cylinders have the same height so what is my volume of a uh, of this particular cylinder volume v case of the case cylinder is equal to the area of the base now the base is a circle of this radius so it's pi r square times height equals two. Now we can substitute for r square we can substitute this and we can have pi uh, r square minus k square n square r square times r divided by n. So this is my volume of the case cylinder. Well, let me just do something. Pi r to the third uh, divided by n, that's this one, minus pi r to the third k square n cube second and n cube right i just open the parentheses <coughs> now what i have to do now is i have to summarize it That's the volume of half a uh, sphere. Now, if I summarize it by k, now this doesn't depend on k, so if I summarize this, it would be n times whatever p r cube divided by n, which is p, uh, pi r cube. Now this would be minus pi r cube n cube sigma k square of 1 to n so this is something which I the only thing which I have to know now actually I did already summarization of uh, all integer numbers from 1 to n and I have a formula ready for this um, in uh, in the topic uh, of volumes volume of the pyramids um, I actually, in uh, quite some details, explain how this can be summarized. Now, for those who know the formula, obviously the easiest way is to prove it by induction. Well, in any case, since number one, I know the formula, and number two, it's also derived in a relatively logical way in another chapter, I'll just use the formula, I wrote it my, uh, for myself here. So the formula would be, pi r cube minus pi r cube divided by n cube and here I will put the formula which I wrote here it's n times n plus 1 times 2 n plus 1 divided by 6 that's what it is now okay so this is the formula for some of our uh, volumes of the cylinders. Now, if n increases to infinity, if number of these cylinders increases to infinity, and they are tighter and tighter um, 
inscribed into half a sphere, um, we intuitively feel that the volume, this sum, is supposed to uh, tend to a limit, which is the um, the volume of the half a sphere. Now, what is the limit of this? Well, think about it this way. Basically, I would like to consider this part, which is only one which depends on uh, on n when n goes to infinity. If I will multiply these, what will I get? I will get 2n cube plus something related to n square plus something related to n and plus something free uh, member. This will be a polynomial of the third degree, right? 1, 2, 3 n's. And the, and, and the coefficient at n cube would be 2. Now, here is also n cube, and there is a 6 here. So, if I will divide this into this, what will be? Well, first of all, I will have one-third, right? Plus. Now, this is n square, and this is n cube, which means it will be something divided by n, and then something else divided by n square, and something else divided by n cube. But these are, as n goes to infinity, they all go to zero. And one-third is the only thing which is left. Right? Two six, one third. So this piece will go to one third as n goes to infinity. And what I have left is I have pi r cube minus one third of pi r cube, which is two pi r cube divided by none divided by, by 3, and this is half a sphere, and now I have to multiply it by 2 to get the sphere, which is 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. This is the formula for the volume of the uh, sphere, the entire sphere. Well, that's it. Formula is ready. The volume is this, and we can use it wherever we need it. Now, why did I start with volume and not with the surface area. Here is why. Now I will use the volume, the formula for volume, to derive the formula for uh, surface area. Because if I will start from the surface area, and let's say I will use exactly the same technique, I will inscribe these cylinders and I will try to evaluate their um, their side surface. Well, that's not an easy thing because <coughs> if you remember the radius, radius square actually was equal to r square minus uh, k over n r square, right? That's the radius of the case um, cylinder, r k we can use, right? Now, so, if I have a cylinder, this is the radius. Now, now, my surface is equal to what? The circumference of this circle times height, right? If I will cut my cylinder and roll it out on a flat um, plane, I will have a rectangle, right? If I will cut it here. I will have a rectangle, and lower side would be equal to a circumference, which is 2 pi r k. Doesn't look like k. This is k. And the height would be equal to uh, r divided by n, right? Because this cylinder is 1 nth in height than the radius of a sphere. Now, but this thing it contains this square root of this uh, expression, which doesn't look right. And to, uh, to deal with this square root would be kind of difficult, I would say. Right? So you have to summarize certain things for different cylinders, for different k. So it's not easy. I mean, just purely technically, I, I have decided that I don't want to go this way. Whatever I suggest right now would be much easier if you already have the, the volume. And by the way, in case of a volume, 
I, uh, I needed the square of, of, uh, of the radius of each cylinder, right? Because it's the area of the base of the cylinder which is important, which is pi rk square. Okay. So, uh, now let's go back to my sphere. Okay, this is my sphere. This is the center. Um, consider the following. Choose a few points on on the sphere. Let's say here. So that looks more like a sphere, right? So you choose this point, for instance, this point, this point, and this point, or whatever. And you connect the uh, for each point. You connect a couple of nearest one. Let's say this would be connected to this and to this. And this would be connected to this, and this to this. And then each of these points you connect to a center. Now, what happens in this case? Well, if you imagine if this is a sphere, and you have, let's say, I don't know, three points here. Let's put it closer and connect it to a sphere, uh, to a center and in between. What is this? It's a pyramid, right? So, you put another point here, another point here, it's all pyramids here. So, you can actually fill your sphere with pyramids. In a very analogous situation in two-dimensional space, it's visible much better. If you, for instance, take these few points on a circle and you connect them, and connect with the center. You are dividing a, a circle into triangles which are inscribed into uh, this particular circle. Now, in as much as the area of the um, uh, the area of the circle can be approximated with the sum of these triangles and then the more points you put in between, the better the approximation. The volume of the sphere can be approximated as the sum of the volumes of these pyramids, right? Now, what happens if I will put my points denser and denser? So they will put more points and the distance between points will be smaller and smaller. Then these pyramids will be with their bases will be closer and closer to the surface of of the sphere, right? So, now, let's talk about the volume. Volume of each pyramid is what? One third um, area of the uh, base times height, right? Now, what is the height of these pyramids? Well, the smaller they are, the closer height becomes to the radius of the circle, right? Same thing as here. The smaller these triangles are, the, the altitude of these triangles will be closer and closer to the radius. Same thing with the pyramid here. So this thing will go to the radius as the number of points is increasing infinitely. And the distance between these points is also uh, decreasing to zero. Now, what is the area of now, now, I will summarize that thing, right? So it will be sum of all these, but this will be very close to R, which means that when I'm summing, I can take R out of, if I will do sigma i i, okay? i is number of the pyramid number, and uh, summing is uh, by, by i. So this will be very close to R, so it's approximately, so it's approximately R, times sigma one-third s i. Well, one s also can be outside of the sigma. So one-third goes here, and this is sigma by i. Now, what is sigma of s i, where s i is the area of the base? Well, it very closely, um, it, it will be closer and closer to the total surface of the area, right? Because we are covering with basis of these pyramids, we are covering an entire 
sphere. So basically what I would like to say is that the volume of the sphere would be equal to one-third R and area of the surface of the sphere. That's my kind of, again, half-intuitive, uh, half-obvious consideration. And now, since I know the volume, I can very easily determine the, the area, right? So, S is equal to 3V divided by R equals to uh, 3, 4, uh, pi, R cube divided by 3 divided by R equals 2, 4, pi, R square. So that's the total area, surface area of a sphere. Well, <coughs> uh, I think, again, it's better understood all this thing if you start from the volume and consider this equivalency um, between the surface area and the volume of the sphere of radius r. I think it's a very important uh, consideration which goes um, again not very rigorously uh, proven by whatever I was just talking about but again intuitively very obvious um, it's much obvious in the, uh, in, in, on the plane with, where you have a circle and you have uh, different polygons inscribed and the sum of all these triangles is equal to basically almost equal to the area of the, of the circle and the better approximation would be the better if the number of uh, edges goes to infinity and each edge is getting smaller and smaller. So, this is just a three-dimensional equivalent of that. Instead of triangles, we are talking about little pyramids here, triangular pyramids. Okay, that's it. Um, I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. I think it's very um, interesting to read after you have listened to whatever I was just talking about. And um, I don't think you should be really upset for the better word, um, about non-strictly, rigorously defined certain things which I was just talking about. I, I, I did use certain considerations which seem to be intuitively obvious and don't be afraid to use your intuition. Your intuition should actually be developed because whenever you're this, uh, trying to work on something new, it, it's not the calculations which drive you forward. It's your intuition first. First you have to really have a concept of whatever you're trying to create. And then, using the calculation, you can support this, cal th this concept with certain more or less rigorously obtained numbers. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.